Hello and welcome to the first video in the Space Marine 8th edition release week. Um, so the first video today is going to be based around the new codex and as you can probably tell from the title it's an initial impressions. It's not quite a re full review, that'll come later in the week once I've had time to digest it. I mean for the fact this is still in the cellophane wrapping. Um, but it's an initial thoughts review with no prior looking so it's my what I see what I get and what I think about it straight away now I underestimated the ease of opening this there we go never mind so this is going to be a straight open up and what do I think of the codex then later in the week we'll get a full breakdown review of it. So we start and we get immediately get a picture of the Codex Adeptus Astartes, Space Rint, it's for Warhammer 40k, and some nice artwork of a Primaris Intercessor Sergeant. Notably, um, and maybe tellingly, there is no uh, old Marine, shall we say, on the front cover. It's Primaris, that's an intercessor because they've got the armoured plate like that do. That's an intercessor. That's an intercessor helmet. Um, Inceptor, and that's an Inceptor up there as well. So there's been no old Marines on the front. And on the back, this continues as well. I'm not sure how well this will come out because we've got Aggressors, the Primaris Librarian, the Intercessor Squad, Rebute Gilliman, Primaris Captain, Reavers, Inceptors, the Apothecary, and a squad of Vanguard Veterans. So there are some old Marines featured, but that's it. So on the back we get a little bit of fluff background of Space Marines, and then what's inside the book. So some background, a showcase, data sheets, and then the army-wide rules for making them. So when we open the book, first thing has, be, has become standard with GW hardback books, we get some artwork. Again, this is a Primaris picture, but that's some Assault Marine, so it starts to show more blending of forces. And then the faction badge. So we've got the index here. So you've got the Emperor's Finest. So we'll have some background on all the original fan foundings, it looks like. As well as the words, um, background of units, etc. Um, Champions of Humanity. So I think this will be the, uh, what should we call it, Miniatures Gallery. The... Defenders of Mankind section is going to be all the data sheets. It's a lot of them not split up into their battlefield roles. Um, and then Sons of the Primarchs for doing the original founding chapters as well as Black Templars. So we get some introduction, just talking about this. A colour version of the fur of the artwork on the front page. And then we're onto the background, so we'll just do a quick flick through here. So we get some chapter organization, heraldry for the codex, um, a breakdown of what the current state of the galaxy is in. If we just jump forward, say here, we get some successor chapters. Again, it's all Primaris Marines. Um, here, there's some. Um, uh, non primaris which is always nice. I do like my stunty marines, as well as them incorporating the primaris squads into the original chapter uh, makeup. We get the Chronicles of Ultramar, their successors, and we get sections on each of them, as well as some successes there which is a change from the last edition codex so on so forth and we get that for all the original chapters so yeah 
uh, as well as some unknown family ones. So even if you just use this for some painting background, Blood Ravens are in here because of the Dawn of War popularity. Um, the same artwork from the Dark Imperium box set. Gonna be good to see when Mortarion here finally comes out, etc. So then we get the breakdown and background of each of them, showing Primaris Marines largely where they're going to be. It looks like Gimp Workshop is obviously pushing Primaris, but they do have some of the older ones, like here we've got an Assault Squad and the Centurions, as well as bikers, which that isn't gra um, Tacticus armor, so that's not a Primaris Marine. Uh, some Hellblasters, Dreadnoughts with Redemptor and Oldies, background of the name characters, um, just so you can get some feel for what you're doing. Then we're on to the Champions of Humanity section, which is a showcase of miniatures, like we expected. Um, first couple of pictures are Primaris. This is a picture that was teased on the Warhammer Games Workshop Facebook pages, where um, long before the aggressors and Inceptors were announced. I believe those are coming next week. Uh, different helmets for the ones with the plasma weaponry options. Yeah. So we get some Primaris pictures. Uh, we get the different makeup. So we get the intercessors carrying bolt rifles and auto bolt rifles. Um, it looks like there's more than I hand more than two there, and they usually like to keep those to squads, so I think I might have been wrong about like one in five being able to take an auto bolt rifle in my predictions from an earlier video, and it might be a full squad, which is interesting. Um, aggressors, we get reavers with different weapons, which is cool, I was really, really glad they came out. I haven't got a box of them yet though, because I'm still waiting to get a game in to decide if I actually like them in my force. And then a repulsor. Um, I'm not sure what to think of this vehicle, I'll be quite blunt about it. It's too busy. If it didn't have all the missile boxes on it, maybe. And I'm going to look at the sprue closely before I decide to pre-order it to see if you can build it without the missile boxes on it because it'll look a lot better I believe um, yeah but currently with what they've got it looks too busy I don't just don't like it and a Redemptor Dreadnought which which I found out unfortunately those are only storm bolters that it has there not heavy bolters like I thought it might have been but that's not necessarily a bad thing um, through onto some white scars, ultra, uh, imperial fists, some black templars, as well as the differentiation, um, sorry, some crimson fists as well. There's some differentiation here just to show that different chapters have uh, incorporated the Primaris differently. For example, the Primaris lieutenants have been called Castellans instead. Um, yeah, there as I haven't seen much of that yet, but obviously if I see any more that'll come up in the full big review of the codex at the end. Uh we get the chaplains, which is a cool model, can't wait to get my hands on that. Um definitely looks like they're going more for the uh, well, they definitely seem to be showing off more than just Ultramarines so far, which is a good thing. And then we're on to Defenders of Mankind. So, uh, this is going to be the army list building section with all the data sheets. In my full review, I'm going to be looking at how and if these differ hugely from the index, especially the Primaris options. 
So we're through to them here and I'll just do a quick flick through and if there's anything that immediately jumps out, I'll point it out. For example, the Primaris Captain here, it has, from what I can see, no change at all. And the Captain and Gravis armor, uh, let's just do this, also has no options. I was expecting an options in this book with them. I'm not surprised, uh, but so I am surprised at that. But at the same time, I can see why. So maybe we won't be getting the Gravis Captain released single-handedly, and you can only get it in the Dark Imperium box. So as we go through, so Intercessor Squad, let's have a look at the difference here. So. Um, <clears throat> intercessors can now be taken in squads of up to 10. They've gained the combat squad rule, a heavy a heavy weapon, kind of, called the auxiliary grenade launcher, which allows them to make grenade attacks at long range. Interesting. Um, as well as the ability to take auto bolt rifles or stalker bolt rifles for the entire squad. It really wasn't what I was expecting, but it does fit that you take Primaris forces to fill certain slots in your force. As well as the Intercessor Sergeants can now take Power Swords. Um, nothing said about them dropping their other equipment though. Carrying on through... Yeah, as I'm flicking through here, I can't see much of a difference. There's some Primaris Apothecaries and stuff. Everything we expected. A full Reaver squad, so we'll take a quick look at that and compare it. Um, I don't have the old rules to hand, but they gain a new weapon called the Bolt Carbine, which is an Assault 2 Bolter. These can also be taken up to um, squads of 10 as well. Uh, they gain a grapnel launcher, which is a block of a rule, or they can buy one, sorry. Um, so just show you that. They do not count any vertical distance. They, ooh, so that's interesting. So they can move vertically up for free, essentially. Uh, <clears throat> You can also set it up behind enemy lines. You can, which is basically infiltrate from no, sorry, not infiltrate outflank. You can put them um, within six inches of a battlefield edge of your choice, as well as gaining combat squad and traditional deep strikes. You can buy uh, grav shoot them as well. The aggressors, we'll get more into them when I do the full review of them. Terminator squads, not much has changed. The Cataphracty and Tartarus are still there. So yeah, there doesn't seem to have been dropped a lot from my initial thing. It looks like we don't have the uh, Imperial Space Marine anymore, which is okay. It was a limited time run, not surprised it's not in there. But it can still be used with the Index. The Redemptor Dreadnought is a beastie, so I'll just go like this quickly so you can have a look at the rules before I move on. But yeah, nothing is jumping out as being different. The Inceptor, new weapon choice, here we go, uh, is a Plasma Exterminator. And they can be taken in squads of up to six, um, which is an Assault D3 plasma weapon, so you're basically trading off a guaranteed three shots for additional strength and AP. An interesting trade-off. Um, and they gain a modified version of combat squad similar to Centurions, which allows them to split up into squads of three if they contain six. Hellblasters, they gain a lot of options now. They can be taken in squads of 10 as well, so that seems to be a theme in this codex. Everything can combat squad now. <coughs> Apologies. Um, as well as having the standard plasma incinerator, but also being able to take an assault plasma incinerator, which has shorter range and less strength, but 
is a SALT2 uh, and a heavy plasma incinerator. The Hellblast uh, sergeant can also take a plasma pistol instead of a bolt pistol. Um, interesting to say, see that the weapon shot, that you still resolve the weapon shots with the plasma incinerators. I think that's different. Again, I'll have to check it because I can't tell off the top of my head. So, we're on to the vehicles now. Um, heavy weapon, heavy vehicles, there isn't the repulsor. Does that mean, sorry, heavy support. I think that means the repulsor is a dedicated transport. Yeah, it is. Here it is. So just going to do a quick look at these rules for it. But yeah, it's a dedicated transport, which I wasn't expecting. This codex has a lot of that so far. Um, everything is there, and then we get our breakdown, Rebute, Gilliman, etc. The Land Raider Terminus Ultra is gone, I think. I didn't see it in there. And then Chapter Tactics are at the back. Now, we've already seen these, but that's a new rule there. Defenders of Humanity. Um, which, from a quick read, it allow, it's essentially objective secured from last edition, where if you've got a Space Marine Trooper around an objective, you control it. Even if your opponent has more. Then we've got the chapter tactics, different stratagems for using command points, warlord traits, uh, you can pick it from here, or you can take the specific one. So we've got Angel of Death, which is subtract one from leadership of enemy units, Imperium Sword, which allows you to reroll charge rolls for your warlords. You won't be taking that for your Black Templars, I think. But if your warlord does charge, you gain one attack. So uh, it's a trade-off. Got Iron Resolve. Um, Add one to the wounds characteristics. In addition, roll a dice each time your warlord loses a wound. On a roll of six, your warlord shrugs off the damage. So that's basically the warlord trait from the core rules with an additional wound. So if you're going to take that one and you're running space rings, there really is no reason why you won't take Iron Resolve. And that's probably going to be the one I'm going to take with my Dusk Raiders, just because I feel like it'll fit their reformed Death Guard vibes. We've got Storm of Fire, which makes them better at shooting. Uh, increase it. Each time you roll a sick, so more for friendly... Uh, for yourself or a friendly unit, their AP um, characteristic is increased by 1, so AP 0 becomes 1, AP minus 1, etc. Rights of War, automatically pass moral tests around your warlord, and a champion's humanity is add one to all hit and wound rolls made for your for this warlord in fight phase. That is pretty big when targeting characters though. And then we've got specific ones, so let's have a look at these. So you got Adept of the Codex while your warlord is live, roll a dice each time you spend a command point to use stratagem on a 5, that command point is immediately refunded. That's pretty big, it allows you to keep reusing them and not worry so much. Um, the Deadly Hunter for White Scars gives them a, more, a potential to cause a mortal wound. Imperial Fists... Um, uh, any Imperial Fist unit within 6 inches uh, add an additional 1 to their saving throw against um, attacks with an AP of minus 1. So that basically means you don't lose your cover save until you're facing AP 2 weapons. Tenacious opponent for Crimson Fists. We've got Crimson Fist. Chapter trait. Woo! For at least 10 enemy models within 6 inches of your Warlord, when he fights in fights, he's add D3 attacks. So that fits their law of being anti-orcs. have got Black Templars, which allows them to perform a heroic intervention within 6 inches and move up to 6 inches instead of 3 inches. We've got Salamanders, which adds 1 to their strength. It's flat, it's simple, but it's easy. We've got Raven Guard, enemy units cannot fire Overwatch at your Warlord. That's pretty big. It allows them to run alongside Reavers pretty well, or Aggressors if you're running a Gravis Captain or what 
Um, it allows your Terminators to more safely get into close combat. And an Iron Hand one is every time you roll it, roll a hit, a hit roll to six, you uh, make an extra attack um, using the same weapon. There isn't anything saying about close combat or ranged here. So, yeah, that's pretty big. And then we've got Chapter Relics. So uh, I won't go into right now because this is already a 20 minute video and I wanted this to be a short one. Um, but yeah, some returning ones T for Terra, Armor Indomitus, as well as chapter specific ones. Uh, new psychic powers, uh, tactical objectives, and then some more art. So that has been a quick initial review for the Primaris Marines. Uh, like I said, this is going to be a week similar to what I did for Launch of 8th Edition, which if you haven't seen, check it out. I've got a playlist on the channel. Um, so this week we're going to be covering an unboxing of the Aggressors, the Redemptor Dreadnought, as well as doing a more in-depth review of this once I've had a look at it, and uh, updating Tuesday Tactics, but that won't be on a Tuesday, unfortunately. That will be later in the week. So thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you.